So Jordan Peterson is a guy I have made multiple videos on but I haven't really talked about his views on university specifically and this subject I feel quite passionate about because I went to university for four years. I went to two different universities. I did a bachelor's degree in history and I also did a master's degree in political science specialising in international relations. So I feel like I have a good um, variety of subjects and I've also done a humanities and a political science which is a social science and having gone to two different universities I've had the experience I've been taught by a range of lecturers across the political spectrum and I can really talk to how university actually is compared to what Jordan Peterson thinks it is and I'm also going to talk about why conservatives make I guess shitty um, historians, they make shitty political analysts in most cases, and this broad statement of course doesn't include everyone, but I'm going to talk about why universities are dominated by so-called left-wing and liberal people rather than conservatives, and I'm going to use some examples of Vietnam War historians to make my points, because it actually is a fight over the historiography of Vietnam, because you have a lot of conservative historians placing their own emotions, placing their own feelings, ignoring the facts and trying to rehabilitate the war. But we started with Jordan Peterson, so let's get into his view. Now, he has spoke a ton about this stuff. Mainly he focuses on the university's infiltration by postmodern neo-Marxists. And this is the term he just trots out, but it makes no sense. Because postmodernists believe there's no like concrete way you can describe how the world works. Whereas Marxists believe there is a very concrete way to explain how the world works. And obviously it's focused on economics, but really you can't be a postmodern neo-Marxist. And if there is such a thing to exist, then there isn't a whole lot of them. And in no way is there a coordinated effort by postmodern neo-Marxists to infiltrate universities. So I want to play one clip here to show the outright delusion of Jordan Peterson and how he simultaneously talks about brainwashing at university from the left while advocating for his own type of brainwashing from the right. So take a look at this clip. So the universities have figured out how to conspire in some sense to pick the future pockets of the students that they're purporting to to um, educate and they're not educating them, they're indoctrinating them, they're not teaching them how to speak, they're not teaching them how to debate, they're not teaching them how to write, they're not introducing them to the classical wisdom of the Western Judeo-Christian tradition. And that's, an abs that's absolutely appalling because that's what the bloody institution was there for to begin with and that's what it's supposed to be doing. So, in Jordan Peterson's opinion, Universities are brainwashing all the children, they're brainwashing all the students, they shouldn't be brainwashing them in so-called postmodern neo-Marxism, they should instead be brainwashing them in something that really has no basis in fact, the Judeo-Christian classical tradition. Now, this term has been made up. There isn't a Judeo-Christian tradition. You could maybe argue about a classical tradition from universities that date back to, you know, ancient Greece, but where does Judeo-Christian go into this? And furthermore, Judaism and Christianity have been at odds with each other for about 2,000 years. Only recently, during the Cold War and the emergence of Israel as a Western power, did the term Judeo-Christian come about. Do you honestly think centuries and millennia of anti-Semitism, which culminated in the Holocaust, do you think these people like the Jews particularly, and think the Jews have formed the bedrock of Western civilization? And I've made videos in the past how Judeo-Christian is essentially white supremacy, it's essentially a white supremacist dog whistle, because it has no basis in reality. You're just saying you like the West compared to everything else. You, you think white European culture is the best. And because you're religious yourself, you'll tack in some religious Stuff to it, even though the enlightened thinking, which I think he is referring to with, you know, classical values, obviously re-emerges during the enlightenment and it comes from people who are either atheists, who are deists, or just general people pushing against the established order, which of course included organized religion. So why I highlight this clip is you can see here, Jordan Peterson's problem isn't a statistical analysis of universities and the makeup of different faculties and the makeup of different teaching boards. It's just his own personal bias. As a Christian conservative, he finds it problematic that academia is typically dominated by people who are more open-minded, who are more liberal, who are more leftist. And I'm gonna get into why this is and why conservatives make such poor academics, but I wanna play one more clip first. And so what people need to do in order to know that they should stop taking the courses is to know that these is to know what it is that these courses are aiming at. So that needs to be explained. Then they need to know what language the people who teach these courses are using in order to fulfill those aims. Then they need to know how to identify the courses 
then they need to know that it's in their best interest both I would say spiritually and economically to avoid those courses and those disciplines like the plague and then maybe we can get the disciplines that have become entirely corrupt and the ones that started that way to put themselves back together before they run themselves out of existence completely and I might as well name a few of the disciplines that I think are particularly reprehensible to begin with I'm um, obviously I'm painting this with a very broad brush and I'm not making the claim that every single person who engages in activity within all of these disciplines has been corrupted beyond comprehension by the postmodernist neo-Marxists but it's close enough first pass approximation so um, as I said already women's studies and all the ethnic studies and racial studies groups man those things have to go and that faster they go the better they should have never been put It would have been better had they never been part of the university to begin with, as far as I can tell. Uh, sociology, that's corrupt. Anthropology, <laughs> anthropology, that's corrupt. English literature, that's corrupt. Um, maybe the worst offender are the faculties of education, and I would say... Now, I don't know if anyone else agrees with me, but I think from watching these clips, it's quite clear Jordan Peterson actually has some mental problems in terms of he's so paranoid and he's so delusional, he's making up these conspiracies. And the way he's talking about them is deadly, deadly serious, but they aren't really based in any reality. And saying all these different subjects are corrupt, where is his evidence for that? Again, it's just because he doesn't agree with the politics as a conservative right-wing male who also advocates for patriarchy. So of course not like gender studies. Now his speech there and many of his other statements really just play into the same mindset I find on Twitter that conservatives think they're oppressed because moderators on Twitter and Facebook clamp down on conservatives more for hate speech but they don't really think the answer is that they're the ones doing hate speech. Like he feels oppressed because he's underrepresented, but he doesn't realize why his type of demographic are underrepresented in academia. Now I spoke up before how I think the whole left versus right, you know, balance of opinion is a bit ridiculous. And I think if you want to go into academia and as someone who's been through it to a high enough level, I've done my master's degree, you have to be open-minded because so much of what you're going to learn is going to challenge your very core beliefs. And I had my beliefs change in university, not because the teacher was indoctrinating me. It's because they would make you read about stuff, analyze data of things that you thought you knew, and it would change your whole perspective. Now, history isn't just about reading historians' work. That is part of it. But historiography is very important and you analyze different things. How you're good at that is that you have to go in with a more objective mindset. You're gonna analyze these sources and see how they're bad. But here's where I want to use the battle over the Vietnam War's history to illustrate my point better. So a lot of you guys will be aware of the general view of the Vietnam War, obviously bad. Obviously shouldn't have been fought in many Americans' views. But thanks to Ronald Reagan and his rehabilitation of Vietnam, that it was a noble cause. The Americans should have gone in. It's just weak leadership which made them lose. And if he was president at the time, he would have done everything to win and he would have won. Well, that gave birth to numerous conservatives, neoconservatives, far-right types, and their historians writing new histories about how the Vietnam War could have been won. And these guys are very, very emotional about it. They feel that Americans who didn't support the war hate themselves, all this type of rubbish. And I'm going to read a really good e extract from an article that we were actually made to read. So this article by Robert Bazanko, How I Learned to Quit Warring and Love Vietnam and Iraq, debunks a right-wing historian's talking points in Vietnam called Dr. Keith Taylor and it talks about the right-wing think tank the Vietnam Center at Texas Tech which is a right-wing group of historians essentially so who does this center get into talk so in the past decade or so the center has featured among others Admiral Elmo Zumwalt, William Colby, Sam Johnson a right-wing congressman from Texas General Vang Pao, Laotian commander and alleged drug lord in Southeast Asia, many officials from the government and army of South Vietnam, a number of representatives from POW MIA groups. In fact, with Bruce Franklin's discrediting of the POW MIA issue, Texas Tech seems to be the last refuge of people in that particular cottage industry. And just to stop here, the POW MIA issue is basically a tactic the US used to stop negotiating with the new government of Vietnam. Basically, they said, in the negotiations, Vietnam was still holding on to American prisoners, so they would not deal with Vietnam properly and would keep the sanctions and keep an embargo on Vietnam until they gave back either the prisoners or the remains of the prisoners. But the lists of the so-called prisoners that the US had were people who had often gone missing, so the Vietnamese government had no idea what happened to them, had no idea where their remains were. 
So it was this disingenuous on the US's part to keep Vietnam isolated and try and undermine the new government. So when a right-wing think tank of historians keeps pushing a myth like that after it's been largely discredited, you can see that they are not interested in the real history of it, they're not interested in the facts, they are starting from a political point and finding facts to suit their narratives. Again, this is why conservatives, and if you're conservative-minded, you are bad at academia because, as a conservative, you are meant to have a solid view that you're meant to protect, hence why you are a conservative. So it doesn't help when you're meant to be in a subject which you are continually challenging your own beliefs based on the evidence you uncover. It doesn't make you a good fit for this position. So now Bazanko goes on to the criticisms of Keith Taylor, this right-wing historian, and what he's going to highlight is numerous problems you find with conservative academics. So what is immediately striking about Taylor's critique of the Vietnam War is its passion and anger. He's mad at Kennedy and Johnson for their apparent half-hearted efforts to win in Indochina, upset at those who did not have his sense of honour and dodge the draft because he fought in the war, disturbed by those in America who did not support the war, even if it was a consequence of poor leadership. Now, Bazanko says the anger itself is not a problem if it's backed up by evidence, but Taylor's arguments, like those of many other revisionist historians, is based on emotion, what they feel should have happened, on their sympathy or pity for the soldiers of South Vietnamese, their detestation of hippies or disrespect for political leaders who did not wage the war vigorously enough in their opinion, or contempt for scholars who now write disparagingly about the war, about Taylor's analysis about self-loathing Americans at the cause of failure in Vietnam. Taylor is proud he's not among the self-loathing Americans who notice people in other countries looking to us for leadership and see nothing but neocolonialism and imperialism. So like you see in that article, this historian Keith Taylor, a right-wing historian who works for a right-wing think tank, he bases his arguments in emotion and cherry picks things to back it up bad academic, and you can see similarities of Jordan Peterson, right? He comes to the argument with this viewpoint based in stuff that doesn't even exist, you know, the Judeo-Christian classical tradition of universities, which I already pointed out was garbage, and then he makes his argument from there. And again, like I showed you, the reason academia is filled with people who are more left-wing is because people like Taylor and Jordan Peterson do not make good academics in subjects like history or political science. And you find that with most academics, most of them on the surface, even through their courses, aren't very political in terms of you can't really gauge their politics. Yes, you can tell probably that they're open-minded and left-wing. You can't tell if they're a liberal, a social democrat, a Marxist, or anarchist. You can't tell any of these things really. Now, based on my own anecdotal experience of two universities, based on, you know, the makeup of these faculties, people from very, very different countries, very different ages, it's hard to believe they're all indoctrinating kids with the shared goal of, you know, spreading Marxism. Again, I just can't get my head around this conspiracy theory. It's just so nonsensical. And of course, I've made videos about cultural Marxism itself, how it's essentially just a fascist conspiracy theory that Jordan Peterson's regurgitating. But also a big part of being an academic is you're going through masses and masses of data. So, you know, there can be things that completely change your mind when you look at the data. So most Americans supported the Kent State shootings. You would not expect that, would you? Most Americans support the killing of students by the National Guard because they're protesting the war. Or that most people supported the Vietnam War the whole way through. I don't know about you, but I found that statistic pretty surprising. And again, I have to keep an open mind because when I'm really getting into these subjects, into the nitty gritty, I'm having my views challenged. You know, when I go into a subject, I'm thinking, yeah, the anti-war movement, they were great. They helped end the war. But when you look at the raw data, that simply isn't true. So again, my, my view has been changed because I've been proven wrong. And I think when you're young, you are a bit more open-minded inherently because you know, at least most people should know, you don't know everything. And when you're reading new information, it changes your mind. And I think inherently, when you just get exposed to raw data and raw facts about political issues or historical issues, your stance on the world just changes and you become more anti-establishment and you become more left, which is what anti-establishment traditionally is, because you see the lies that you've been fed, the narratives that have been constructed by the governments of you know various generations, which have brainwashed you. And that's the ironic thing. Jordan Peterson says universities are brainwashing you. You are brainwashed from the moment you are born by whatever country you live in. You are brainwashed of these narratives. You could be brainwashed by religion. University for me was breaking out of the brainwashing, realizing what you know the UK was, realizing about you know imperialism, colonialism, realizing about all these narratives I've been fed my whole life are wrong. Realizing how my politics are wrong, realizing how I have got this whole system all wrong. 
it's about challenging your own views. So again, it makes you more left wing because being left wing means you're being more open, which often move you away from a conservative narrative because conservatism is all about protecting the status quo. Conservatives are part of the establishment. Conservatives prop up the establishment because they don't want anything to change. So people like Jordan Peterson see young people like me changing their politics when they go to university because they've been exposed to facts that they never knew before. And they see that as, oh no, the universities are brainwashing all these children to not like the West anymore, to not like, you know, the standard status quo, to not like the patriarchy, which I support. They must all be postmodern neo-Marxists, whatever that means. Again, just like that Taylor historian, just like that Texas Tech institution, they have their conclusion without the facts and they will cherry pick things to support them. And when you confront them with the real facts, they won't change their mind. And that is why conservatives are such bad academics. So anyway, let me know what you guys think of the video. Please like, maybe subscribe, share your experience with university in the comments. Let me know what you think of Jordan Peterson's view on university as well. If you want to find me on social media, follow me at The Cavernacle. Twitter is the main one, but also Facebook and Instagram. Reddit is another big one for me as well. So r slash The Cavernacle, that's my subreddit. U slash Tommy Cahill 1995, that is my personal Reddit. And feel free to message me on any social medias. Check out my Patreon and WordPress in the description. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.